Christian Derisaw had some incredibly encouraging things to say about Dallas Turner, but does that really mean anything at OTAs? Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast, where we're always trying to learn something new. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And thank you so much for those of you who listen to Locked On Vikings every single day. My hashtag every day is I appreciate you all so very much. Thank you so much for hanging in, tuning in, hanging out, tuning in every single day. And if you're new here, hello and welcome. My name is Luke. You can find this show just by searching out Locked On Vikings anywhere you can find your favorite podcasts, including the SiriusXM app. You can also find this show on YouTube or Amazon Fire and Roku if you download the Locked On Minnesota Sports app. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. It's the best place to find last minute tickets. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. So, we haven't talked about OTAs in a little while, not since we had Alec Lewis on the show. You can go listen to that for a recap of like the first couple of OTAs, but OTAs have continued onward, and there are a few notes worth mentioning some quotes from people. So we're going to do a little bit of an OTA roundup today, as well as the news that the NFLPA is trying to do away with OTAs entirely. What's the deal with that? Is that a good idea or not? We can talk about that. And then, of course, we have the Everyman series going over A.J. Green today. No, not that A.J. Green, the one we have, the the corner from Oklahoma State. (laughs) But first things first, we have to get into the Alabama edge rusher Dallas Turner, who uh, caught Christian Derrissaw's attention in a rep. It, it, it doesn't sound like it was a rep against Derrissaw. He was just watching it. But he put a spin move that he said was faster than Daniil Hunter's. A lot of things very exciting. Everybody's very happy with Dallas Turner and the way he works and, and you know, seeing the kind of tenacity and, and the ferocity that you would hope to see. Uh... It's OTAs, though. So the question is, do we really care a lot about this? And I don't think it should change your pride. If you were, like, super against Dallas Turner, I think Christian Derrissaw liking a spin move he did once doesn't, like, it's not really that much of a of a, of a point against you. Uh, and if you really liked Dallas Turner, you probably didn't need to hear that to be convicted in that opinion. So I don't know if this makes, like, a huge difference, but... You know, I, I, there is something to the guys that work out. You kind of understand it, stand it, and know right away. When there aren't pads on, though, and you 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 can get this from anybody who's uh, coached at that level, they'll all say it. You don't have pads on, and you're not really doing any real evaluation. Nobody's winning a job today at at OTAs. Nobody's you know uh, losing or, or or gaining reps or anything like that. Once we get into the season, that is all going to be for camp. This is for honing skills and it's funny when you see like a clip of a, of a defensive lineman doing drills everybody wants to have an opinion everybody wants to go in and evaluate it and I think unless you're familiar with that specific drill and what you're looking for it's not really an evaluative place I think you know like look every day you're being evaluated in the NFL right like you will be cut for much less than like having a bad drill, right? Like you, you can be cut for anything in the NFL. And so I get it that everything's a little bit more on edge, but I, th- this sort of directive that O'Connell has that this time is not an evaluative time. He tells his position coaches, don't be evaluating, be teaching, be getting people to be better. And the point of a lot of those drills is not to be a place where you prove how good you can hit a sled. It's a place where you improve, where you try to get, to, to build better habits and better muscle memory. Um, and so when I see those drills, it's really hard for me to look at that and be like, ooh, that was a good drill. Ooh, that was a bad drill, right? Like, this isn't the NFL Combine. This is this is OTAs in May. Um, and I mean, they're, they're, they're lifting weights, <laughs> trying to get into shape. But hey, it's not like a good rep can be bad news. So for what we have, which there's very little we can have, but for what we can have, it is positive. And I guess that's something you can sleep on for now. Uh, Elsewhere in the world of rookies, the quarterback competition here with J.J. McCarthy and Sam Darnold, everybody's getting their fair share of praise. 
you're going to hear that. This is a, a world of PR stuff. Um, Sam Darnold apparently had a very good day on Thursday. and Or, I'm sorry, on Wednesday. And uh, Alec Lewis mentioned that. And um, I think Josh McCown said that, you know, he had a, he had a good one today. Uh, and J.J. McCarthy... It's been interesting with J.J. McCarthy. So what I'm working on is, it, even though I just said you can't really evaluate stuff on OTAs, I think like we're all so thirsty for J.J. McCarthy information that I want to find a way to look at what we have seen in terms of clips. Somebody actually compiled all the clips of J.J. McCarthy. I retweeted it um, a couple of, of uh, days ago or last night. And so if you go to my timeline, Luke Brown NFL, you can find it there. Um you can watch all of the throws that the team has posted. There's going to be a lot of biases to that, right? It is what the team has like been willing to post. It's only going to be the best looking reps, right? So of course they're all going to be nice, easy completions. Some of those reps look like they're edited to be like other catches or, you know, the, the trajectory of the ball is cut out and it's hard to tell if that was really the thing or if they're just doing like a compilation video, right? They're just doing a highlight video. Of course, you would cheat that a little bit just to make the video fe feel dynamic because ultimately Vikings Entertainment Network isn't as it is just as much trying to make a good music video as they are trying to make like good propaganda. Like they're not a propaganda arm. They're just trying to make a social media thing that that does well. Uh, so, you know, grain of salt with all that. But what you can see is most, if not all, of the drop back process into the throw. And then whether or not the throw is accurate or not is, is something else entirely. But what you can see is how long he's holding the ball and how slow it is, which is to be expected as he's getting used to the reads and getting used to the playbook and all of that. Uh, and you can see like the footwork and the the throwing motion and the wind up and how he steps into things and all that. So what I'm trying to, I want to get this done next week is to get an episode that goes into detail about all the things we do learn. And if anything is super different from college and really try to track the progress that he's made, whatever it is sort of expecting that everything is a little bit open and, and work in progress. Um, but you know, hopefully you can see at least the direction that it's headed. That would be pretty cool. Uh, Jordan Addison took the podium and said, hey, you know, he throws a tight spiral, so you got to catch it when he was asked about, like, how's J.J. McCarthy doing? And what's it like, you know, building chemistry with a new quarterback and stuff? And he says, you know, yeah, it's a little bit different catching a ball from one guy than the other, but I got to catch it. Um, what's interesting, that, that does sort of imply that there's at least some rotation going on with first team and second team and stuff. That doesn't mean that, you know, they're trading snaps with the first team or anything like that, because what they'll do and they'll do this in camp too is they'll have you know the second string quarterback throw to a team that's half ones and half twos and they'll do a lot of rotation like that on the defense too so it's not really something that you can look into um but there you have it another kind of thing for for otas and then the last thing i wanted to mention is um kevin seifert put the sort of final nail in the coffin of that weird florio charlie walters report we talked about at the beginning of the week that was that the Vikings, I guess, tried to like trade up to number five and to take Malik neighbors. And then they would have traded Jefferson away. And oh, my God, are they actually, you know, maybe not as close to a deal as we thought. Uh, Kevin Seifert basically said, yep, that's all hogwash. Uh, and so I'm sorry to you if you believed in reporters that confirm things or that that uh, report things before confirming them. That's a little bit putting the cart before the horse. Hopefully we all learned a lesson today. <laughs> so. Next up, I want to discuss this potential change in the offseason structure. It, it's a little procedural. If I mean, I mean, look, if you're listening to the podcast in May, this might be the kind of thing you, you care about. If you're the kind of fan that uh, only tends to tune in in September, then you're probably not here anyways, but it's, this is probably also not something you care about. But I implore you to care about AJ Green's story, which is also coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. It's the best place to find something for your car. Your car is an extension of you and your personality and your lifestyle, whether it's a big truck that you know hauls whatever you need to from point A to point B or something more eco-friendly for your big long commute. Whatever it is, it's you. And it's, it's your unique thing. You, there's only one your car. So take care of it. Uh, take care of it in the practical sense of what's under the hood, but also... If you want to customize that thing out, eBay Motors has you covered 
regardless. They have over 122 million parts for your ride or die. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. You're making your model. You'll have the right part for whatever special thing your car needs. eBay Motors can help you navigate all, all of that. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Thanks so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. When you're done here, go check out the Locked On Minnesota Sports 24-7 YouTube channel. Minnesota Sports Talk all the time, or you can go to Locked On Sports today and get a national version of that. Sports Talk all the time, 24-7. There's nothing else like it on YouTube, so go check that out. All kinds of Locked On shows, including this one, kicking through there all the time. Um, next up... I want to talk about an NFL Players Association proposal that they are working for. This was reported on Tuesday from NFL Network from Tom Pilliser, I think, was the one that really had it. Um, so I'm a little bit late to the party here, but I did want to get to this. And really, I just want to whinge a little bit about the destruction of offseason programs and how I kind of think it's, it's, it's making the product of the NFL worse. And that's a bummer. I don't want that. I, I would like the, the quality of play to continue. But essentially, the idea is to reduce injury. And, and, and that is, that's going to be the goal for everybody. That's my goal. That's everybody's goal. Like, that, that makes sense as a goal. Um, the idea here is to do away with the, the OTAs we just talked about and instead expand the ramp-up process into training camp. Right now, you have, what, like three practices outside of pads, but they're otherwise they're full-speed practices in, like, shells. And then you strap the pads on, and then you're in training camp. And inevitably, the first day you get pads on, someone gets hurt somewhere, like all the time. That's, like, a really common day for guys to get hurt. And it's also common-ish for guys to get hurt in that, those first couple days because they haven't warmed up enough to go a full practice yet in terms of, like, pra like NFL speed cutting and NFL speed acceleration and deceleration. So you get kind of these ligament injuries sometimes on that. You get that first day at camp ACL tear. Um, there is only so much you can do. Sometimes you just get unlucky and you tear your ACL. I knew a guy that tore his ACL getting a bowl of cereal once. Um, that, like, is, it happens, right? You just step wrong and it just pops. But uh, the... I guess the idea here is that this is data-based... Um, it is driven by the players union and the recent new leadership of the players union. And it seems this is the way Tom Pelissero put it was that this isn't directly tied to an 18 game season, but a longer schedule would of course make the season end later. And then that means that you have less rest time and all of that. I, I do kind of think that by, you know, by May and and early June, like that extra couple of weeks of rest time when you've already had, what, like 20 weeks of rest time is probably a drop in the bucket. It's probably a bit of a diminishing return there, but I get the idea. And then players would report in like mid-June or maybe even early July to training camp and you have this sort of extra six weeks of maybe like chiller stuff. I am pretty in favor of this if that's the timeline. That adds like a that adds way more than 10 days. So you're you're losing 10 practices in May where you can only kind of install stuff and you can't really get a momentum going and you're adding way more practices and they're probably slower practices which means mental reps, which means you can install more stuff. That means everybody can get more complicated and the sport can get cooler. I'm in favor of that. I think that's cool. I I I like this idea. At, it, I mean, who knows what the details and stuff are, but I, as it is presented, I like this idea. There is I, a really big problem with the way that practice times have condensed and in the interest of getting rid of injury, which is very much a noble cause, I think you've introduced two problems. One, you're going to just lose discipline like what we think of as discipline, the penalties and stuff like that, snap counts. You're going to have more mental mistakes, and mental mistakes tend to manifest themselves in five-yard penalties that are really annoying on, the, on game day. So it just makes football not as fun to watch, right? And hey, if football needs to be a little bit more choppy and in favor, you know, or in, in exchange, more guys stay healthy, okay, I'll take that. Whatever, that's fine. Um, but I, I, I don't think it's accomplishing that either. 
what I think happens when you restrict all that practice time is that guys don't get as good at properly hitting, at properly cutting, at properly, um, you know, falling. You don't get as comfortable with that. Like there's a way to approach those things. And because practice time is so condensed and everybody's trying to install all their crazy emotions and stuff, you lose some of those fundamentals. And you see like lower level coaches complain about this a lot, which is funny. Uh, like, you know, high school coaches and stuff will be like, ah, the fundamental. These are like a lot of old guys too. Like, ah, there's no fundamentals nowadays. Uh, <laughs> like that, the Buffalo in the, in the Buffalo Wild Wings commercial. Is that, it's a Buffalo Wild Wings commercial that played like every third commercial during the NCAA tournament. That's like, there's no fundamentals. Uh, this is exactly what I'm saying there right now, though, is that a lot of those, like you're kind of just expected to have it and to show up having good tackling form because we got to teach you these blitzes. And, and there's no real time to go through all that. You'll have your individual drills and stuff. You have 10 minutes of it a day, but there's like that's not that much. So having some extra days that can be all for that can help not only get people's bodies warmed up, um, like running backs have talked about this, where they 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 got to get that first couple of hits in before they really feel comfortable playing without hesitation. And a great way to get hurt in an NFL game is to be hesitant, is to you know kind of lose your momentum. They, they, you got to meet contact a certain way to protect yourself and to protect your body. It also, I think it helps build good muscle memory for avoiding 15 yard flags as defenders for, you know, getting good habits for where you can and can't hit the quarterback and how you're supposed to handle that. You hear the complaint all the time with those new rules. That's like, well, what are, you know, what are defenders supposed to do? They're, they can't hit too high. They can't hit too low. They can't hit too hard. They can't, they got to like stop. They got to, they can't land on the guy. You got to move in midair. You got all these really, really tough things. Um, and building the answer to that is muscle memory is is to teach it a certain way install it a certain way to have those rules be consistent enough for a long enough time that the feeder programs of America high schools and colleges can teach it properly that way for something to be agreed upon as the safe way to do it and then for it to have enough time to, to, to hold that title for a long enough time for it to trickle out to all of the, 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 the lower level programs so that guys are coming into the NFL understanding that. But a, a, another way to do that is to have, you know, a week at the beginning of the season where we're just kind of figuring out how to tackle and that's all we're doing. And you can still have that same O'Connell esque. This is just a ramp up period. Uh, this is just, you know, an, an educational period. Don't worry too much about being evaluated. Just try to get better which is a good directive anyways um, until, you know, until it is time to compete and time for, for somebody to prove to us why, you know, you're, you, you deserve the job. That can pay big dividends. And even though it is more practices and even though it won't be intuitive because people will get hurt during those practices, it just happens anytime you're out on a football field. I think on the whole, you're going to have an easier time dealing with the major challenges uh, that have been presented to like, I think this is really good for defenses, not even necessarily because I mean, offenses get to add more complexity too, but it just seems like this can come down to skill a little bit more and a little bit less to the weird box of the quarterback. And did you know how to do it? Cause we, we drilled this once in August and otherwise we didn't have time to, you know, um, I don't know. feels like it's good for the sport in a whole bunch of different ways. But that's just my take on it. Uh, next up, we are going to do the Everyman Series entry for AJ Green. Every year at the NFL Combine, there is one. Usually a DB or a wide receiver who totally bombs it. Somebody that just absolutely beefs the weekend, wasn't in the right, didn't do the training right, wasn't as athletic as we thought, maybe didn't come in in the right state, right, and partied or something, and just absolutely beefs the combine. And their draft stock just <laughs> totally torpedoes. That was A.J. Green. He was 
everything was going right for him. He had offers on offers on offers. Let me, t- this is according to 247, but he enrolled in 2016. And over the course of 20, from 2014 to 2015, he got an offer from Louisville, Oklahoma State, which is where he ended up. Texas Tech, Colorado State, Rice, SMU, Fresno State, Utah, California, Boise State, Houston, Arizona State, Oklahoma, Colorado, Missouri, Iowa State, Wisconsin. Is that enough schools? Is that enough options? Like, that is a highly touted player. And he shows up at Oklahoma State, and he absolutely relishes the on-an-island nature of playing cornerback. He's boundary corner, which means he is going to get, especially against colleges that, that like to, to answer with this on offense too, you're one-on-one against the same guy. Um, you know, he's playing against Baylor. He's playing against Denzel Mims. He was in the same draft class as Denzel in that 2020 draft class. So he's playing against like Denzel Mims, who ends up being a first round pick, who's like their superstar guy. And it's just you and me all day. He loves that. He loves being able to sit down and practice all week for him and say, I, I know I'm going to know this guy inside and out. I'm going to know exactly his tells and I'm going to know exactly what kind of releases he likes to do and what kind of moves he likes and what his weaknesses are and all that. And I'm going to play and I'm going to do it. He's so excited about that stuff. He's a Texas kid. Texas is very, very serious football place. So uh, that that mentality is sort of ingrained in him. Um, and he has a good enough career at Oklahoma State, but I think where the fires, like the, the fires in which the real guy is forged here come in the pros and in the pre-draft process. He has a pretty good, he goes to senior bowl. And he has a pretty good senior bowl, all things considered. Um, he, at least during the game, he gets away with his reps. Nothing super crazy happens. And you can always be pretty excited about that. Um, he's got a big frame. Like, he's looking like, okay, here's the prototypical corner that just had a good senior bowl. He get, he's, he's invited to the combine. Let's see what this guy's got. Four six two, everything's gone. <laughs> it is truly that easy. And and everything is, is really on a tightrope like that in the NFL. The NFL is so big brutally unforgiving one four six two you're out you can go to your pro day and do a different you know try to run a better time at your pro day but everybody's gonna sort of dismiss it because pro days are always biased and you gotta add two tenths and there are so many reasons that a four that that you can show up and run a bad 40 that don't necessarily mean that you aren't fast you could have you know be tired that's a tiring weekend it's a really grueling um, schedule. You've got interviews, you, you're waking up at 6 a.m., you're walking around, you're maybe dehydrated. You're not in your best athletic mode. If you make an idiot mistake and you go out and party or something, all bets are off. Maybe you just didn't really train right to get out of sprinter's blocks because you were training for the drills more. A valid decision, but one that has now come back to bite you and has nothing to do with how fast you actually are. So it doesn't matter. None of this context or nuance is is really going to be part of this because A.J. Green drops not just... I mean, he was looking like maybe he could be a top 100 player. He is not just falling out of the top 100. He falls out of the draft entirely. Nobody drafts him. Now he is an undrafted free agent whose claim to fame is the novelty of sharing a name with that one wide receiver. (laughs) That's bottom. But it doesn't take long at all. In fact, I, I would guess that considering the uh, the money he got from the Browns, who end up signing him as an undrafted free agent, they give him one hundred and forty five thousand dollars. So I'm going to guess that that deal was probably struck before the draft even ended, and it was like you know if you don't get drafted, just come to play for Cleveland. We'll give you one hundred and forty five k for the time. That was like an unprecedented amount of money. That was like the way we're talking about like Jay Sean Jones and Gabe Murphy, and the way we talked about like Andre Carter and Ivan Pace last year. Um, that is you know, we, we really would have drafted you kind of money, I think. Um, and it gets him, I think for an undrafted guy, it it gets him that sort of, um, that, that pull position that you're looking for with just trying to make the team. And he turns a few heads. He looks, he's a hard worker. You know, everybody's really impressed with, with his, his attitude. And that goes back to college as well. And, and even like, the recruiters at Oklahoma state saying like, yeah, we really like the way this kid works. Everybody's pretty impressed with that. 
And in 2020, which is tough because that's also the, the COVID year, and he wasn't even sure um, he wasn't even sure he was going to have a pro day. And to be honest, if Oklahoma State didn't hold a pro day, which that was happening, like pro days were happening, if you remember, like on the calendar, like in March when the NBA was shutting down and st- like people were deciding not to have things. So it was like if your college happened to have a pro day before ground zero day, uh, you know, before like the, the, I, I, I kind of see like the NBA shut down. I think it was March 11th that year as kind of the start of like true, like shutdown things. So if you're, if your school had a pro day before that, or like that week, you could maybe cheat it. But if your school's pro day was, was scheduled for early April, unless it was like a huge school, it probably did not happen. And I know there are a lot of prospects that could have used that, that maybe didn't get drafted or didn't even get looked at that could have been discovered there. Like it absolutely had this impact. So regardless, um, AJ Green had his pro day and did just enough to show the Browns, hey, you know, this this big corner that played pretty well, that put a lot of good stuff out on film, maybe he's worth a shot. Ultimately, he will not make the team in 2020, but he does make the practice squad and he ends up on the team. He ends up getting into a couple games, kind of doing the bounce up and down the practice squad thing as Browns players go on the COVID-19 list. And, and so it almost becomes like it creates opportunities for him for him just as much as it almost took one away. Uh, it creates opportunities because suddenly they just need bodies so that he goes in and he actually gets a couple of games in and under his belt and he'll actually make the team. Uh, all the way through 2023, he'll be a part of the actual Cleveland Browns, like a depth corner, fifth corner, you know, playing special teams, that kind of thing. 2023 wasn't quite as solid of a year as 2022. He spent the whole year on the on the on the team. Um, but in 2023, he got waived like two days after cut down day and was on the practice squad. And then after and he spent that whole season on the practice squad. And then afterwards, they didn't bring him back. So. The Vikings gave him the deal that the Browns decided not to, and, and now here he is, um, w- one of many D-backs that has that special teams experience to maybe try to find a way on, maybe with the new kickoff rules or something like that. But perish the thought of what A.J. Green's career maybe would have been if he could shave a 10th off of that 40 time and do a four, five, two, which still isn't great, but at least doesn't, you know, doesn't fall you out of the draft, but it's that, you know, that there's this momentum that we talk about with this series a lot where the, the sort of classic path to the NFL where, you know, you're a four star recruit and you, you, you're maybe red shirt in college, but over the course of college, you ramp up and you get more playing time until junior, senior year, you're a leader on the team. And then, you know, you get whatever draft pick you get. And then that gives you a, a certain leash of your third round draft pick. You have, you're elite, you have that leash and you, you stay on the team for as long as that kind of gives you that runway and that goodwill. And, and, and then if you develop accordingly, then, you know, you're on that path. Anything that disrupts that an injury that, that disrupts that kind of college development path you're supposed to be on or going undrafted when you weren't supposed to, because you bombed the 40, suddenly everything is on life support all the time and you're just another one of the long shots that's just like in, you know, treated as a camp body. That's where AJ Green has been and he's been fighting to get out of that gutter ever since he bombed that 40. That's where we're at on him. If he makes it to to practice squads and he makes a living, you know, now he has to just kind of be happy with that and try as best he can not to wonder what could have been. Um, We will talk again next week. See you. Have a great weekend. And as always, it's cool.